So we're here today at Lap Sap Juan, which is uh, the trash bay, as they call it, on the Cape d'Aguilar Peninsula in the corner of Hong Kong, near Sheko. And this is where there's a lot of uh, trash that's collected from the currents and the wind that basically this whole little bay acts like a big sieve. And you can see how much stuff is below. Tons, not tons, but thousands of pieces of styrofoam of all sizes. And this stuff is really difficult to pick up. In this form it's okay, but as soon as it starts to break up and become little walls, it's almost impossible to recover. And it's almost like a snow. So we're going to take this to Andy's shop in Chuan, which is the only recycling shop now in Hong Kong for styrofoam. We're going to show that this styrofoam can be recycled and it has a value. Just that people don't spend time to collect it and turn it into something of value. And we want to show that that's possible. So I'm here today at the Polyfoam Recycling Center, which is an NGO run by my friend Andy Lee. And it's the only one in Hong Kong that recycles styrofoam and polystyrene today. And it's pretty amazing. All of this stuff here, Annie's gonna tell you about it. One of the things we have a big problem with on the beaches is these little socks or nets that go around all the fruits and vegetables around Asia these days, because these things always show up on the beach. And what we really need to have happen is for the stores at the warehouse or at the point of retail to take these off of the fruit and vegetables before the consumers get it. Because once the consumers get it, they go out. And if the stores could do that and put it in bags and get it back to the warehouses and back to a place like Andy's here, then we can recycle it and he'll show you how to do it. But there's all kinds of stuff here and um, you know, you're gonna enjoy this video because it's pretty interesting how this all works. So the trash uh, we accepted from Ocean Recovery Alliance. So you can see what sort of polyform uh, in the sea they pick up. Uh, like the con food containers. Yeah. The boil. Yeah, the big piece there. So before we put it into the machine, we have to chop it up into tiny pieces. And yeah, spend a lot of time also. So this way is the hot melting machine. So basically, uh, they crush the polyform into tiny pieces, and it goes hand to the conveyor. Here is the heating element. So the polyform will melt in this side and turn into uh, a sausage-like material. Yeah, it's really hot. It's about uh, 120 degrees Celsius. Yeah. The process is they uh, heat up the polyform and the uh, microbreed they will uh, they will destroy the outer cells so the air will come out so there's remain only the outer outer bit uh, as this one uh, condenses material so now let's demonstrate so we just put the polyform in the machine they automatically crush the uh, polyform the tiny pieces. After it crush, so you wish the conveyor go down to this um, 
Titan Ring. And the polyform will come out from the outer area and condense the, the polyform. We just put it into a machine. So all the air it escapes. So it only remains the plastic bit. But you can see a big piece of rock only gives us a tiny bit of uh, recycling material. So uh, we use a tray to mold the melted polyform and we form a block like this. So you can see this one is pure white and this one is grey A material. This one is a bit brownish, this one is grey B material. Yeah, because this one is a bit uh, dirty or a bit dirty, uh, some oil in the polyform. So that's why the color uh, is a bit brownish. Yeah. And sometimes we get some pink or light blue or yellow uh, polyform, we have to separate into individual color and melt it on its own. Yeah. We sent to China, uh, there's some downstream recycler will we'll, uh, break it up again and we melt it. Uh, they will make the recycling resin. So those recycling resin can turn into like photo frame uh, molding for decoration, the outdoor wood like furniture, uh, some insulation block, yeah, uh, even the TV cell.